Good morning, Hank. It's Sunday. Yesterday I was at the Indiana State Fair and I got to see the world's largest boar. He weighs more than 1,100 pounds and he can't stand up because his body is too big for his tiny little legs. And what you ask is the name of the world's largest boar? Walkin' Tall. Get it? It's, it's funny because he can't walk. Hank Walkin' Tall, the world's largest boar who can't walk, reminded me a little bit of America's healthcare system. Depending on your perspective, he's either impressively huge or distressingly huge. Uh... So what do you do when you have a pig that's so big he can't walk? You either kill him, put him on a diet, or keep feeding him. Which is more or less what the healthcare debate boils down to. So Hank, I want to talk in a nonpartisan way about the healthcare debate, but I don't want to scream, and I don't want to act like the people watching us have the intellectual sophistication of brain damaged goldfish. And mostly I don't want to talk about death panels, because they're not in the bill, and the stupid, unsophisticated debate about them has distracted from a really large and significant issue. Okay Hank, so here are two things that pretty much everyone conservative or liberal agrees upon. One, the United States spends way too much much of its gross domestic product on healthcare. And two, our current healthcare system is radically unfair. I'm not saying that other models wouldn't be more unfair, just that our current one is unfair. Whether you have good healthcare in America is dependent largely on whether you work for a big company, because big companies have to provide health benefits, and second, whether you have a pre-existing condition, which a lot of times isn't your fault. Some people argue that we need a sort of large-scale government-run insurance company, the so-called public option, which everyone would be able to buy into and poorer people would pay less than richer people, and then this huge government-run insurer would negotiate low lower costs for procedures and also cut down on the number of procedures used. Now even though the public option would not in any way eliminate private insurers, private insurers still hate the public option because they know that the government run insurance company will be larger and therefore more able to negotiate lower prices, which will in turn make the public insurance less expensive, which will make people less inclined to use private insurance. Then you have the people who want to put the pigs on a diet, who say that instead of a public option we can create these sort of non-profit insurance companies that will then have to compete with private insurance, and because they won't be for-profit companies, they'll be incentivized not to work for the shareholders in the company, but instead to work for the patients they represent. Now, of course, the downside of the put the pig on the diet plan is that you still end up with tens of millions of people who have no health insurance whatsoever. And then there are the people who don't want a healthcare system overhaul. They want to keep feeding the pig. A lot of those people are happy with the current state of their healthcare, and to be frank, I think they probably don't want to pay for people who make stupid decisions. And on some level, Hank, I can empathize with this, because when I was at the Indiana State Fair and I saw chocolate-covered bacon, I thought to myself, geez, I don't really want to be on the financial hook for people who eat chocolate covered bacon. So Hank, here's the underlying problem. Even though a lot of people are screaming, I don't want socialism, no socialism. In America right now, we have a lot of socialism. We share the cost of schools and roads and the military. We also currently have socialized medicine. We just have an outrageously bloated and inefficient system of socialized medicine because there are hospitals in America where anyone can go and get treatment. That treatment may eventually bankrupt you and it may be of poor quality quality, but you can get it. And I would argue that it is the inefficiency of our socialized medicine that in the end makes healthcare so much more expensive than it is anywhere else in the world. Is healthcare a privilege or is it a right? If it's a privilege, even if it's a really desirable privilege like indoor plumbing, we need to stop giving healthcare of any kind to uninsured people who can't pay for it in advance. But Hank, I have to tell you, I think the reason we continue to treat people who are uninsured is because we don't believe that healthcare is a privilege. We believe that it is a right. And if it is a right, like life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, it is the responsibility of a government to protect that right. I'll see you on Tuesday.